Hey there, welcome to lesson four. And in lesson four, it's really all coming together because we're actually going to be writing some copy and picking some images. So what are we gonna cover today? Well, today we're gonna do our recap as usual. Um, gonna talk about the benefits of visual content and copy and how they need to tell the same story. Gonna talk about why video is important. I have a uh, scheduling document for you to use so you can write all your copy and select your images and make life easy there. Talk about video best practices. And then we have some tools that we think are pretty cool and websites for all this other cool stuff. So we'll get into that. Okay, so what have we gone over so far? So goals and content strategy. That was lesson one where we kind of did some high level language to your, your people, uh, finding your audience. We dug down deep and we found who your perfect audience was and you created those personas. And then in lesson three, what type of content and when to post it is what we went over. And then in each of those lessons, you had a worksheet to fill out to get all that information together in one place. So now I'm gonna ask you to make sure that you have your content strategy, your personas, and your content calendar handy so that you can use them for today's lesson. Okay, so copy and visual content. Visual content are images and video. Um, and as a rule of thumb, copy is good, but visual content is better. Why? Because our brains process visuals so much faster um, and it gets to the brain faster. So we like visuals, right? You know, they talk about different learning styles, but most of us are visual learners. Um, and if you want to reach the majority of people, meaning they're scrolling through and even if they don't stop and read the text, if they're seeing the image and the image supports the story and your um, logo is there, your logo should always be there, very beginning of the video as well as on all of your images someplace, you're getting a hit of awareness. So how does your visual content tell your story? I wanna give you a quick example. Let's take an electrician and they are doing an educational post about how frayed wires can cause fires, right? So they write a post about it, but then the visual could be something that's um, really engaging. It could be a puppy chewing on a wire for a lamp cord or something like that. Um, and then the copy is talking about, you know, frayed wires, don't plug them in they um because they can cause fires that type of image will probably get someone to stop and look and they may be curious enough to read what the post is about if they scroll by they see a puppy chewing on a wire their brain's probably going to register oh that's not good i wouldn't use that wire at least the message is getting across and then again the logo is on there so they're associating your company with that message so why do i keep talking about video right Video is better than still images. So let's talk about why. Um, Facebook is saying that the entire platform is gonna be all video with no text, right? No place to write in text by 2021. Um, I'm not sure if that's gonna be true, but it's coming. So in that scenario, when you create a video, you'll either have to talk your message or you'll have to put text in to convey your message as opposed to having that space for copy. This is a really, really important point. 95% of a message is retained when someone watches it, compares to read it. So if you put something out there for your company, some type of a message, do you want 95% retention or do you want 10% of that retention? That's why um, video is so powerful. I want 95% retention. I want as many people as possible to, to keep that in their head and bring it up when they need it. Um, the platforms reward you for video. So if you've got two identical posts, right? Same content, um, 
one you use a video, one you use still image, that video post is going to get more impressions and more reach, 48% more than the still image because they know that the, the platforms know that we want video. So when a piece of video content is made available, they're going to show it more because they want us to keep coming back. And then 65% of YouTube users look for videos that help them solve a problem, right? And what does every company do? Their product, their service solves a problem. So having a video that talks about how you solve a problem um, is just gold, right? And you can do it for all your educational, all your behind the scenes. Video can be used everywhere. So now I just want to show you an example of a video um, that is educational in nature for a company. This is our intraoral camera. This allows us to show patients exactly what I'm seeing in the mouth. Behind me, you can see a tooth that has a little cavity on the side. Patient comes in, they don't think they have any cavities, but when I'm able to show them what I see on the x-ray with what I see clinically, it helps the patient better understand what's going on in their mouth and get a better idea of the work that has to get done. The thing I love about this video is it's demonstrating a tool that they use to help make patients more comfortable that shows them they care about their patients. And then it's also a differentiator. Not every dentist uses those types of tools. And if it's something that um, you can relate to, then this may be a good dentist for you. Now also realize we did that with the, the dentist herself as a talking head and demonstrating things. You don't have to do your video that way. There's other ways to do it. You can do slideshows. Um, you can do whiteboard videos. Um, so you don't have to have a person in front of a camera to do that if you're not comfortable. All right, now that we've talked about video, let's go create some posts. Okay, so pull up a copy of the posting schedule. It's a link where all your downloads are found. And it's actually gonna be pulling up a copy of the Google Doc and save it to your own Google Drive. Um, if you don't have a Google Drive, I would highly recommend getting one because it makes it easy to um, just organize all of this stuff in one place that can be shared with people. So once you have it open, the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna come in here with your monthly content calendar and put in you know, week one, week two, and then create a space uh, for every post that you've decided to do. So for week one, if you're doing two posts, create two uh, spaces with the one in the column there. If you're doing, you know, two per day, which is a total of 10 or 14, then create all 14. This is a table, so you can easily um, add as many sections to this as you need to. Then go through and put in your uh, post date and time that you want it to go out based off of what you put in the uh, monthly calendar and the type of post it's gonna be. So get all those filled in, transfer that over. Next is your post content and your image. So the way I recommend doing this is um, you put in the topic, right, of what the post should be about. So in the example of this post, this is about uh, video format sizes. And go through and just figure out what that um, topic's gonna be for behind the scenes and your questions and whatever else you're doing. Then come back and first draft each post, what the content's going to be. Then once you're done with the first draft, now select your images and or create your videos. Um, then if you're selecting your videos, uh, when you're selecting your images, edit them up too. So if you're going to add any text to them or if you're going to put your logo in, um, now's the time to do that. And then you can link them all by just doing a uh, insert image into the document. If you do a video, depending on where you're doing it from, um, it's just going to put a link to the video in here. Then once you've done that, come back and edit up your text. You know, make sure everything's spelled right, grammatically correct, um, and that they do really tell the same story. You know, maybe you picked a slightly different image because you were inspired, so update the copy to include what that inspiration is. And then 
add any uh, hashtags that you're going to be using across your platforms because they are important for many of the platforms. Next, if, if you're the business owner and you have the final say on all of this, great, you're ready to go. If you work for someone else or if you're collaborating with someone and they need to review all of this, you can easily send them this document and then they can comment, make changes, all that other good stuff right into the document. Once it's all ready and set to go, now you're going to take and use this document to schedule all of your posts in the scheduling tool that you choose. And in a little bit, I'm going to talk to you about different scheduling tools, but everything you need is all together right here so that when you do transfer things to the scheduling tool, it's super fast and easy. So hopefully you've at least gotten things transferred over from your content calendar and you have your topics in there. So now let's talk about video formats and video should be formatted for mobile first and all mobile first means it's a buzzword and you're going to see it everywhere. What it means is that people are consuming video at least, um, at least for social platforms on mobile devices. And so you want to format for being viewed in a vertical position on a phone because 99% of how videos are viewed are this way that you see right here. And they, um, depending on the platform and the area of the platform, um, there's different formats. So the format or the ratio, right? It just gives you, um, how wide and how long it should be. It doesn't tell you the size. It's, it's more that um, like size is the dimensions. So regardless if it's small or if it's large, it still can be a nine by 16, right? It's just either a small nine by 16 or it's a large nine by 16. And nine by 16 in a vertical is the preferred format for stories on both Facebook and Instagram. And those are usually listened to with the sound on for whatever reason, that's what the data shows. Um, many feeds use a four by five format. So you'll notice that it is actually cut off at the top and the bottom and doesn't take up the whole screen. So like Facebook and a couple of others use this particular format because there's copy that they want you to see or something else above and below. Feeds tend to be scrolled or consumed with the sound off because people are just doing it at, at different times. Other feeds like an Instagram, um, carousels and slideshows will have a one by one format, which is a traditional square format. Um, and because they're feed, all of these are within some form of that. Because all of these are in some form or fashion part of a feed, they're consumed with the sound off. And then your streaming platforms like YouTube, the 16 by nine is this is what it looks like when it's consumed vertically, but if it's turned horizontally or into landscape mode, it will take up the whole screen. Um, so this is a little bit different. And because it's YouTube and their educational videos and they're, they're consuming video by choice, it's usually done with the sound on. Um, so don't go crazy with trying to produce everything in all of these formats. Pick one. I recommend the one by one square. It's an easy format. Um, as you can see, it's in frame for all of these, regardless of how things are positioned. If you choose to go with a different format, like if you're, if you're doing the nine by 16, um, make sure all the really important stuff is in that center area. So it doesn't get cut off at the top or the bottom if it's displayed in a different format. So logos, um, anytime you're pulling in maybe some content, keep it in the center, in the middle, nice and tight so that it doesn't get cut off. This slide is available in your download section. So if you want to um, download it and print it and keep it with everything to reference it while you're creating video and stills, you can do that. So you need tools to create all of this stuff. And here are tools that we like. Um, many all of these tools are user friendly for non-professional graphic designers and video editors. They were designed with you in mind. Um, we like Biteable for video creation, probably the best out of all of these because it's a, re it's, it's a workhorse. Um, you can upload your video 
You can upload your still images in combination. They have stock that you can use for free as part of it or buy in addition to. Um, you can put words in. You, they have music that you can use that is not, um, that's copyright approved so that, you know, your sound's not going to get turned off accidentally um, as part of it. Um, so it's, it's, it's a really, really good tool. Canva is great for putting your logo in and putting some words in on top of still images and video. Ripple has great little templates where you can upload a still image and use their template to have some fly in stuff come in. You edit it with your text super fast and simple, but it is template. So if you don't like the templates, then you got to use something like a biteable that can be uh, much more flexible. And Plotiverse is just cool. Even if you don't ever use it, go take a look at it because what you can do in there you can upload a still image and only have sections of the still image move. So if it's an image of a, uh, a stream, you can actually have the stream moving, but everything else in the picture stays still. Use it sparingly, but it's a really cool effect. So stock, right? We talked about um, you can use stock video and stock pictures and things, but you have to buy that stock. Pexels is free, right? They have stock that you can use there. It's limited, but it's good. And Deposit Photo, their images are a dollar a piece. So every month you're going to be needing new images and because you're creating different posts. So we want to keep this really economical for you so that you're not paying $16 for an image. Um, and then Vector Stock is its artwork that you can buy as stock. If you're handy with a tool like Illustrator or any other vector editor, you can actually change colors of the artwork and do different things. Otherwise, it comes with JPEGs that you can actually crop down or do whatever you want to and, and, and utilize that way. Those are a buck a piece too. So now we're going to talk about your scheduling tools that you're going to use that now that your schedule is all done and you need to schedule things to go out for the proper date and time. Facebook has a tool called the Facebook Creator Studio where you can schedule Facebook and Instagram posts to go out at those specific times. And it's a free tool. And it doesn't matter how many Facebook or Instagram accounts you have that you're scheduling for. It's, it's always free. Buffer, Agora Pulse, and Hootsuite are paid tools. Buffer does have a free level where if you have one of each kind of page, then it stays free. But as soon as you need more Facebook pages, like if you have two pages that you run, or if you have two different Instagram accounts or two LinkedIn accounts, that's when you have to pay for those. And Hootsuite, you know, it was the first into the market and it's still going strong. Um, in the video library, there are tutorials for the Creator Studio and for Biteable. And so go check those out. Um, the others I didn't create any for because they've got really good support tools themselves. Alrighty, so we just went through a lot of information. So I'm going to give you a couple of next steps to help ground you so that you can continue to move forward. So finish writing your copy and your visuals and get ready to uh, post your schedule to your scheduling tool of choice. To help you figure out what your scheduling tool of choice is, is Go take a look at um, some of the commercially available ones I showed you, as well as the um, video I created for you for the uh, Facebook Creator Studio to see what you want to use. And then I would go check out the uh, Biteable tutorial that I created for you. See if that's the tool you want to use for your video um, creation going forward. But pick a tool, get used to it. Um, so that when you go to create every single month, it gets faster because the more, you know, the tool, the faster it's going to get. Okay. So submit your questions. And if you want me to take a look at a piece of your schedule, send me that too. Don't forget to send me your content strategy, your personas and your calendar. So I can give you better answers. The more information I have, the better the answer is going to be. And with your content schedule, 
I cannot review the whole entire schedule and provide feedback on every single post. That could take a really, really long time. Instead, if there's one specific post you want me to review or you have a specific question, more than happy to answer that. Okay, go ahead and get those schedules done.